Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. That was a good worship service, wasn't it? It was. Okay, let's just finish it with a time momentarily before the Lord before we introduce what he wants to say to us today, what he's revealed. So Lord, this morning, you have found our worship to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. And this morning we ask that the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that's permeated this place, orchestrate the words of my mouth to be exact the way you've recorded them, the way you want them now, in this time, in Christ's name. About seven years ago, matter of fact, about seven and a half years ago, my brother-in-law told me, and I was living in California, he told me that the church needed a speaker, that the pastor was ill, And he asked me if I could come. I was off that weekend, and I was tired. But God spoke to me in my heart, and I delivered a message. And the title of that message is Now. I wasn't thinking about this as an introduction. Matter of fact, it was late last night. And the Spirit of the Lord brought to my memory the things that I had said that day. Matter of fact, I had a DVD and I began to play it. And I began to hear what the Spirit said. Let he who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. What I'm about to proclaim to you today is what God is saying to this church in this time, right now. At that time, that message seven and a half years ago started with a opening from Hebrews 11.1 1, where it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I remember an encounter that I had with the Lord on a day off when the Spirit of God came to me and he said, Roy, what does Hebrews 11.1 1 say? And I said, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He said, Roy, that's wrong. I remember getting argumentative. I said, what do you mean? I, I got to tell you, you don't want to argue with the author. He always wins. He said, Roy, open your Bible. So I went and I got my Bible, and I opened it up to this chapter in Hebrews, and I began to read. And I said, now faith is the sub." He said, Roy, you never said that. You overlooked it. Every word that I speak is of yes. divine importance. That's right. That's right. You overlooked a key word. By the way, that word is found in the Bible over 1,400 times. It's got to have some significance. In the New Testament, it's recorded over 400. That word now to God is extremely important. Because he doesn't want to wait. We're accustomed to waiting. God doesn't want us to wait anymore. He wants us to expect right. what he's going to deliver right. now in this time. As a matter of fact, I, I, I said, he said, Roy, do you want to know why that word is there? 
And I said, yeah, tell me. Now remember, I've gone to Bible college. I've, I, I'm, I've read the Word. I'm in the Word constantly. And by the way, if you're having trouble in your life, <coughs> and you've been reading the Word and dedicating yourself to prayer and to getting closer to God, and you have all sorts of trouble, you have become an HVT. Let me define it for you. A high value target. Mm -hmm. Satan knows that the more you equip yourself with God's Word, the more you know God's Word, the more you confess God's Word, the more his kingdom here on earth is threatened. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's right. They're mighty through God to the mm -hmm. pulling down of strongholds. Right. They're supernatural. <clears throat> you know, and we sometimes we get away from faith. Yet it's the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. You can't even be saved without faith. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them yes. that diligently seek him. Amen. God just doesn't count time. He makes the time count. Amen. He's in the business of doing things that he wants to accomplish, and he needs a channel through which he's going to flow. Which brings me to what I want to tell you this morning, what I'd like to share with you out of the book of Exodus. Someone said this morning when we were praying, there's something about this church that's special. Well, it is. Yes. You know, Fernley keeps growing. Yeah. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the task is going to get harder. You're never going to accomplish it in your own power, right. in your own might. Yeah. That's why you need to turn God loose through your life, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it's expedient that I go. You'd feel better if he was here. <laughs> but it's expedient that I go, that the Comforter might come. The Comforter is a revealer of truth. Yes. He's a guy. He takes it his and he shows it unto us. Listen to this word that came to me about this church. Now I want to tell you in February, on the 20th of February, that night, the Lord said to me, and I was thinking of a church that I'm going to in upstate New York. They want me to come in July. And I was thinking of that church. And the Lord said to me, He said, Roy, I want you to tell them, I am sent you. I'm not the God of the past. I didn't just do things then. I do them today. Yes, amen. amen. Let me read this to you. This is this is just when I read it, I just I had to reread it over and over. And this this promise is out of Exodus chapter 34, and it's going to be verse 10. So turn in your Bibles if you haven't, but Exodus chapter 34 and verse 10. <coughs> Ready? Okay. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Behold, I make a contract. I make a solemn oath. 
The covenant is based on God's integrity. It's based on His faithfulness. It's based on His reliability. It's based on His dependability. That He is going to promise whatever He promises, He's going to bring it to pass. Amen. You know something? In Mark, Mark chapter 16 it says, it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. But there's, there's another significance to that word believe. It isn't just the fact that they believed on the Lord and were saved. But they believe in their assignment. They believe that they're called, that they're anointed, that they have the Spirit of God flowing through their lives, Amen. and they have the ability to change others. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now listen to this verse. If it doesn't describe this little church, nothing will. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels, such as not been seen or done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that he'll do through you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is about this church. This church is not about us four and no more. The whole reason God so loved the world, there's a lot of people in the world. This town keeps growing. The prices in real estate are going through the roof. We got people moving out of Reno because they can't afford those prices, and they're coming here and they think it's a bargain at four hundred thousand dollars. We've got people coming out of California. When you say six hundred thousand, they think it's chump change. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's just driving this market and the market's hot so <clears throat> let me just say this to you some people have this idea that the Old Testament the Old Covenant is outdated we don't use it anymore it doesn't have any impact on us today that's not true Right. The Old Covenant is based on a sacrificial system that offered up bulls, goats, and lambs. And what it did is it covered the sins of the people. But it had to be repeated every year. In the New Testament, we had the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. <laughs> And he cleansed us, and they are forgiven forever. Yes. Yes. We only needed one perfect sacrifice, and it was the Son of God himself. Amen. This word is for this church. Thank you, Jesus. You say, well, that doesn't occur anymore. Then why is the New Testament loaded with signs wonders and miracles. Yes. That's right. Amen. My Bible tells me that God keeps his covenant to a thousand generations. Mm -hmm. Hey listen, we haven't covered a thousand generations. We have been there. The way God is going to reach this city and I know that we do a lot of good work. I know we have a food pantry that serves people that are really having a difficult time in life. So that gives us an opportunity to help them 
And it also gives us an opportunity to lead them to Christ. Yes. Right. We have that opportunity. But the opportunity that God is wanting to flow through this church is the supernatural. God is a supernatural, miracle-working God. He is a wonder worker. Have you ever said, I wonder? Mm -hmm. That's a wonder. <laughs> a wonder is when you have to stand in awe and amazement at what God has just done. Miracles are for now. Miracles are for today. What we've done in, in the book of Romans, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Yes. J.B. Phillips put it this way, don't let the world press you into its own mold, into their thinking into their way of doing things, into their viewpoint about God. They'll tell you about evolution. <laughs> they got Buddha, they got Hinduism, they, they got everything. That's it's supposed to be an answer. And the answer is in the opening chapter of the book of Genesis where it says, in the beginning, That's right. God. That's right. That's right. In the beginning, God, and in the end, God. Yeah. That's yes. the way it is. Right. That's right. You know, in January, I had a surgery because I had an occasion where my heartbeat went from the normal 55, 65 beats a minute. One Sunday it jumped to 155. Mm -hmm. Now they had told me, hey Roy, we need to change your medication. So they changed my medication, upped it a little bit. But what happened, I thought, was that medication threw everything out of whack. So what I did is I went back to the old formula and everything was fine. Except when I saw my cardiologist. <laughs> yeah. He thought wrong. I said to him, well, you guys altered my, my general practitioner here in Fernley, altered my medication and threw everything off. Now he was about 38, 39 years old, young guy, brash, bold. And so I said, you know these medications? No, he says, Roy, I doubt it. Hmm. So he has me wear this e-patch for two weeks. And it's an electronic device, it's lightweight, and you wear it, you can shower with it, you can sleep with it, and you don't think anything of it. And at the end of the two weeks, what you do is you take it off, put it in a box, and it goes to their center and it's red. Mm. And what it is is a 24 hour a day EKG. Mm. Wow. They know every beat of your heart, when it happened, when there was a fluctuation, whether it occurred in your sleep, whether, and you have no idea that these, these irregular beats occurred. Mm. So I go back to him, and he recommends to me that I see a Dr. Sun. Dr. Sun, Korean-born, here in America, married a gal out of New York. Great guy. First time I met him, I thought, dear God, he, he could be my son. He's young. He's, you know, he's like 39, 40 years old. Anyway, he talked to me about two ways to handle the problem. He said, Roy, what we could use is we could use drug therapy 
And that will take care of it for a number of years, but eventually the drugs will lose their effectiveness and you will be left with a heart that's in constant AFib. Mm -hmm. Or we can do what is called an ablation, a catheter ablation, which means that the catheter is passed up through the groin into the heart. And there's two. And one, as it passes through, sees the heart on the inside, and it spots the, in the different chambers the cells that are misfiring. And then, as they identify them, they go back through, and they begin through radio frequency heat to destroy them and eliminate them. Wow. They go back through, see if there's any left. Once the procedure is through, you're done. They take you into recovery. I went into surgery at 12.30, came out at 4.30, four hours. I got to tell you, this is kind of funny, the anesthesiologist, he says to me, Roy, he says, I'm going to give you a little sedative to take the edge off. That was the last thing I remember. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 little nap. Four hours went by. Like, next thing I know, somebody's standing over me saying, Roy, wake up! Wake up! Why did I tell you about that procedure? Yes, it did happen. And yes, it did correct it. But sometimes we as Christians, we get out of frequency. We get out of beat. We don't remember what God said. That's why it says, where, the, where there is no vision, the people perish. Yes. Some translations say where there's not a divine revelation, where there's not divine guidance to remind you of the direction that you're supposed to be proceeding, you lose sight of what you're supposed to accomplish. accomplish. I asked my wife for a new Bible for Christmas, and I asked her for the message translation. I want you to hear it from the message translation. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Church, we have a divine proclamation and a prophetic word today. Now, there are other churches in this town. But the one of significance is a full gospel church called Living Faith. That name is significant because it has the word faith. Living faith. The kind that you experience every day. Matter of fact, if the supernatural is not happening in your life on a daily basis, there's something wrong. Miracles should be happening. When you ask for guidance, it should happen. You should get clear directory, direction. This is the way, walking in it. The more you saturate yourself with God's Word, the more you will understand what He wants you to do for Him today. This church has an assignment. Every word of God has an assignment, and it accomplishes what it's sent forth to do. 
This church has a mission, and it's to capture this city for Christ. And I'm telling you right now, the people that go to this church have the capacity through which the Holy Spirit can flow to get this job done. This church needs to be known in the community as the church with signs and wonders. Yes. Miracles. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he's not, he's not the Jesus in the Bible. You know, when I, I think of the time that we miss things because we haven't paid attention to the vision that God has given us. Sometimes we miss it a little bit, we get out of whack, we get all these other things, we start thinking the way the world wants us to think. I got news for you, the world's thinking. They got stinking things. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Right. God's word for this church is take this city. We are a full gospel church. What we believe in is the supernatural. Yes. Because God is a supernatural yes. being. Yes. Remember, God, remember what the word says is God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit Amen. and in truth. Amen. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. This church has a commission. And it needs to spend time focusing and getting just getting a little bigger target, getting it smaller and smaller to where he can focus on that objective. You know, they don't use a shotgun to hunt deer. They don't. They use a single shot rifle that gets it done. One shot, and it's over. Remember, we have one shot in life. I've never heard of anybody on their deathbed saying, I wish I had worked longer. <laughs> doesn't happen that way. You do hear people say, I wish I did what he asked me to do. You do hear that. So I'm reminding you our calling, our mission, our target, in our own backyard. Come on. That's right. We have to get it done. Now the other churches in the community, they're going to participate. But this church, this church right here, is designed to leave the mark. Amen. The supernatural God is still doing his work today. Now. Let's pray. Now, Lord, we thank you for this divine proclamation causing us to focus on our mission here in this community. And the fact that we need to rely on you and allow the Holy Spirit to throw, flow through our lives individually to get this job done. Mm -hmm. I pray, Lord, everybody in this place that had an ear heard what the Spirit said to them today. In Christ's name. If there's anybody here, by the way, I'm going to just remind you of what it says here. I will do marvels such as not been done in the earth nor in any nation. This is what I thought of. And I know I've already closed. 
but I want to bring some things to your memory. This is what's going to happen in this church. People are going to walk into this church that have had back infusions, back fusions, and they're going to leave with a spine that has never been tampered with. People are going to walk into this church with pancreatic cancer and bang, it's going to be taken care of. It's, it's the divine presence of your Lord. Yes. That is what we need more of. And you need to focus on your assignment. And thank you today for being a good congregation. And thank you for your prayers today. Want to take an offering this morning? Yeah, we're going to have communion as well. We're some of the month. Actually, we're going to uh, take two offerings today. Uh, Pastor asked me on Friday to uh, take a separate offering after our initial offering for uh, Brother Roy. Has everybody been served? Okay. I'll just wait for a second. Are you coming in, Tony? Bible gives us clear instruction to do this in remembrance of Him. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is my body, broken for you. Let's partake. After you've done that. Raise your cup. This is the covenant, the new covenant, the blood of Jesus shed for our behalf that justifies us, makes us like we've never sinned. The slate is clear. By his stripes we're healed, and now let's partake of glory. Yes. Men of CMA meeting this Saturday at Burnley Community Center. It's going to start at 7.15 a.m. If anybody can bring any dishes, that would be appreciated. And then also there's going to be a service for Joe McCleary at noon at the same community center, Burnley Community Center.
And as I said before, if I have a moment, I'll take a second offering for uh, Brother Roy. Uh, do we have a, a hat or something to pass around? I think we've already filled the plate. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and the plate does look full. You guys are a generous church. Hallelujah. We sure appreciate what we're coming out and preaching this morning. Amen. Yep. Hallelujah. Thank you. Brother. Well, with that, church is excused. You guys are good for the... Uh, what well, does Pastor always say? Have a groovy day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> groovy day.